All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Uh, you're still watching Daybreak on Trust TV. Now it's time for the newspaper review and we'll take a look at the front pages of uh, the National Dailies for today, May 26th, Friday, 2023. Let's begin with Daily Trust newspaper and it's actually quite scanty here. Uh, we have uh, just one story that talks about uh, the outgoing president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, saying, I I have I have run a good race finished my course and then we have writers that says my administration best in road infrastructure says president confers GCFR GCON on president-elect Shatima says Tinobu best for Nigeria I won't disappoint Nigerians says ex Lagos governor and details of this story can be found on page four. Uh, but there's also a felicitation message uh, to the incoming president, Ashiwaju uh, Tinubu uh, from Tompolo there. We also have more stories inside uh, uh, the newspaper. Uh, on page three, we have how Sultan, others gave me lifeline after IPOP killed my family, says Jibrin. We also have on page five, airline operators kick against move to start Nigeria Air, says it will create problems for Tinubu's government, ministry keeps mum. We also have uh, a few more stories here from inside the Daily Trust newspaper. And uh, we'll just uh, take uh, one more and then we will move on to more stories. And there is a letter to the editor here on page 14 uh, that says, well, it's a question, by the way. Will Ngote Refinery be a monopoly? That's a big question there on page 14 on letters to the editor. And these are some of the stories on Daily Trust newspaper. All right, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. Headline there says, I will not disappoint Nigerians, Tinubu says. Uh, right there, there says, Buhari confers GCFR, GCON on him and Shatima. This story you'll find on page three of the newspaper. We have ASU, federal government releases white paper of visitation panels. Uh, you find this on page five of the newspaper. There is Kano government drops mother charges against Dogua. Interesting. The story is on page three of the newspaper. Uh, CGN swears in 39 additional election petition tribunals members. Uh, you also find the story on page three. There is tobacco kills 8 million yearly, says WHO. Sad one there. Southern Middle Belt leaders restate position on fiscal federalism, insecurity, judiciary and others. You find the story on page two of the newspaper. There is Court of Appeal slams a 40 million naira fine on ex-presidential candidates seeking to stop Tinobu's inauguration. <laughs> There's a political war there. Of Nigeria Air, Nigerian Airlines solicitors write Buhari wants him to stop project. Uh, what Tinobu must do on Shell's $3 billion deal planned pullout of Niger Delta. Amnesty International says, uh, you, you find the story on page four and at the top of the newspaper there, it says, what we will remember Buhari for, Nigerians speak. Uh, lazy Nigerian youths, <laughs> longest ASU strike, Twitter ban, Naira to buy Naira, railway, border closure, banditry, and second Niger Bridge. You'll find this story on page 19. Now, these are some of the stories on the Tribune today. All right, let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper and we'll start from the top of the page there, talking about interest rates. Manufacturers kick against increases, list challenges. Now, Nigeria Air, domestic airlines move to stop takeoff today. Uh, 48 million barrels, alleged illegal sale of crude, falls, Malami insists. Nigeria can't be won by words of mouth alone, says Clark at 96. We also have uh, federal government will award contracts, borrow till May 28, midnight, says Fashola. The lead story here says, I know extent of tasks ahead won't fail Nigerians. Says Tinubu promises headway on security, economy, agric, jobs, education, health, power. Buhari confers uh, GCFR, uh, GCON on Tinubu and Shatima. Says I've run a good race, time to pass the baton. 
adds Nigeria in safe hands in with Tinubu will stop any attempt to scuttle handover, DSS warns, and a court declines to stop Tinubu's inauguration, finds lawyer 40 million naira, and you can find details on page 35. Now, CJN swears in 39 more judges to handle 2023 poll cases. We also have health workers begin indefinite strike. Rate of killings worrisome, uh, says Southern Middle Belt leaders. Alleged culpable homicide others. Dogwa has no case to answer, says Kano government. And uh, these are some of the stories you can find on Vanguard newspaper today. And I will bring you stories from the Guardian newspaper. From the top there, it says Buhari's fragile pieces, a country more fractured than ever. This story you find on page four of the newspaper below the mask there. It says, eight years after vanity of rich talents as football declines, team sports wobble without laurels. Now, in that uh, go there, you'd see a pictorial, a sport pictorial there. And beside there, you'd see court fines ex-presidential candidate 40 million euro for seeking to stop Tinubu's inauguration. Uh, Johesu declares indefinite strike, the month's adjustment of Conhez. The story you find on page three of the newspaper below there, you'd see Nigeria gets seven oil regulations amid 46.16 billion naira stolen and missing crude. A really sad story there. At the bottom there, it says Buhari passes baton to Tinubu, says I have run a good race. And there's a pictorial of the president and the president elect. Inauguration agencies beef up security, one against plant disruption. And we have operators kick as federal government takes delivery of Nigerian airplanes against court orders. Now, these are some of the stories on The Guardian today. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, more newspapers. Let's take a look at the Sun newspaper. And uh, on the Sun newspaper, uh, it says it's taboo to name Second Niger Bridge after Buhari says IPOB suggests Ojuku Ekweme as replacement. And uh, four days to hand over again, DSS alleges plot to disrupt Tinubu's inaugurations once again comments publications that will cause violence. And these are some of the stories on Daily Sun. And we'll move to the Punch newspaper today. It says, May 29, Tinubu gets transition report, vows to tackle insecurity and power crisis. You find this story on page two of the newspaper. We have airlines sue Sirica as Nigeria airplanes arrive today. And a court finds a lawyer 40 million over anti Tinubu inauguration suit. And health workers begin indefinite strike. Federal government shuns demand. The story you'd find on page 26 of the newspaper. The last one there says, reps insist on a $2.4 billion oil seal probe. Grill Malami. This you find on page 13. Now, these are some of the stories on the punch today. All right, quickly on this day newspaper, uh, the top of the page there, NUPRC signed seven regulations to push for accurate crude metering, reduce gas flaring. Uh, writers here says NNPCI's $2.1 billion gas revenue executes five suits of of agreement on OML 130 with total CNOOC others and uh, we also have uh, Buhari says uh, National Assembly should be independent decide own leadership and uh, on the footnotes there we have Bauer uh, fighting financial crimes is crucial to national or it's crucial national service and you can find details of that on page 42 of this day newspaper and uh, with that, we're done reeling out uh, the headlines on the newspaper. And uh, we would like to introduce our analyst uh, uh, who would be, uh, would be taking a few stories and uh, he'll be dissecting some of these stories, you know, uh, for us. And he's no other person but Nuruddin Abdullah. He's the editor of 21st Century Chronicles. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining Good us. Morning. Good morning. All right. So uh, let's begin with, you know, uh, the story on ground on many newspapers talking about uh, the incoming, uh, the outgoing administration handing over to the incoming administration. And on Daily Trust, Buhari has actually said he has run a good race. Now, a lot of people would actually say uh, he has actually run a race, but might not be as good as actually as as he actually thinks. And he has actually come out to say that his administration is best 
in road infrastructure as well what are your thoughts about you know uh the soon to be handover so i think uh <coughs> it is uh very expected to for him to say that he has uh how um run a good race, run a good, uh, race and finish his course but um is that the thought of nigerians he can score his uh, administration high uh, that's personal. Um, he has the right to do so, but do Nigerians think the same? Look at all the indices. Talking about security, talk about the economy, talk about the inflation, talk about power supply, talk about the anti corruption war, mm. talk about even the infrastructure he was talking about. You know, the man has been busy uh, commissioning projects virtually. They show him a woman who say, I, blah, 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 commission, this and what of you. I think uh, Nigerians don't seem to agree with him for obvious reasons. Look at the inflation rate. Look at the power. I believe that this house, even on that generating set. You, you, you understand? The only uh, solace for most Nigerians is this year, at least there will be a peaceful transition. Mm. You understand? And, uh, despite all the turbulence that uh, characterized the Buhari's uh, eight years, you know, uh, Nigeria, we are happy. We are still one, you know, and though heavily battered, <laughs> but we believe today is his last working day. But, but even the DSS is actually saying that there are plans to scuttle the, you know, uh, transition. So, yeah, it's a security agency. They have their own. And I believe that they must have nipped it in the bud. But uh, from all we see, there will be transition. And who are those? My only problem with the DSS alert is this. Who are those people? I want them arrested. So let Nigerians know who are they. Are they people in the government? Mm. You know, in the past, after the election, you know, we know all what happened. The ruling party has been terribly factionalized. The incoming president was not liked by most of the elements in the ruling party, right from the primaries, the general elections, even after he won and declared he was returned by any. Mm. Some people are even thinking about uh, interim government, headed by a retired general and, 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 and what if you, you know. I think some of the elements were even called upon and in, interviewed by the DSS. But uh, from uh, the layman's perspective, you know, yeah, we're heavily battered. That's it. The economy is heavily battered. The country is... Uh, just a simple question. Is Nigeria more united now? that he met it eight years ago? It's a simple question. Okay. <laughs> well, just before Sumi actually comes in, I just want you to, uh, because you talked about uh, his, uh, uh, what do you call it, his, the, the, what he has achieved and everything. But then we also have uh, Fashola, that's the Minister of uh, Works, Works yes, saying that the federal government will continue to award contracts and even still borrow until <laughs> May 28th of uh, midnight. So, um, we are to, um, um, Mr. Fashola is trying to be clever by half. Yes, the president will still be president till May, on the midnight of May 29th. You understand? That's Monday or is it Sunday midnight? You, you understand? But if you look at the rate at which the Buhari administration is making appointments, mm. Borrowing monies, giving out contracts as well, and awarding contracts millions. millions. So, <laughs> where has he been all this while? <laughs> okay, if you look at the history of transitions, particularly in this part of the country, we don't know why uh, the administration is doing that. Less than 10 days to the end of your tenure, you are appointing. 
a substantive accountant general. Hmm. There has been vacancy in that place for months hmm. since the exit of the former accountant general of a multi billion naira corruption case. Understand? There are dozens of agencies that have been without hate for years. There are dozens of agencies, boards, and commissions that were not inaugurated. So until the last two weeks of this administration that he was busy appointing, appointing and inaugurating, if Buhari belongs to another party, other than that of the Tinibus, it's understandable. That's what politicians do. Will be trapped. Okay, last minute. You remember in Ocean, less than one month to the end of the tenure of uh, Oyetola of the APC, he appointed permanent secretaries. All manner of he recruited more workers than he did in the four years he served as governor. But what happened immediately? Pilipis uh, Ademola um, okay. Adeleke came. He even said it. Look at what is happening in Sokoto now. It's understandable because it's the opposition. They don't want a smooth take up by the incoming administration. Mm. Yesterday he swear in a new head of service. He you know, he posted new commissioners. Mm. Just like Ibony Umahi is doing to another APC in coming up. You know, all this cannot stand. That's the reality. You have been in this office for eight years or four years, but you didn't do this appointment until the last minute, and you are borrowing. The president is now trying asking the Senate, the National Assembly, to approve the uh, a judge payment of judgment debt worth over 540 billion, more than half a trillion. Was he sleeping before? <laughs> no, so, you know, saying. all these things, the Tinibus are not, are not happy, that's the reality. Yeah, they will follow the old man, Genji, mm -hmm. until Monday, <laughs> when he moves to the Ra. Then you'll see what will happen. Right from the Eagle Square. Mm. But because it's not nice. And I'm just wondering, these people that have been appointed and you know they are parading themselves, they know they will all go. <laughs> so it's like acting. Real act. Okay, you have been appointed as head of an agency, and you know statutorily, the president. I think minor Sadara there are agencies that have constitutional backing, particularly in their hiring and firing of the chief executives. EFCC now you have to refer to the National Assembly. The man has to be impeached. The CBN out of you. But all other agencies, if the president sacks you in his dream, you are sacked. <laughs> and you know the first thing they will do, there are more than 750 federal agencies and commissions, parastatals and what if you. And the first thing they will do, they will dis ah, people work for this man now. I'm actually and tempted, they need to be appointed. I'm actually tempted to ask you if you think that there's tension between, you know, both uh, uh, the president and the president-elect, but... I don't need, <laughs> I know you won't You don't answer. need a clairvoyant to tell you that. <laughs> So uh, perhaps, you know, some people are uh, already calling out his legacy and his legacy is not really that good looking because uh, in Tribune here, it says that people, uh, it were, people talked to Nigerians, yeah, the newspaper talked to Nigerians and the legacy that Buhari is known for is lazy youths, which is a lot of longer strike, Twitter ban, Naira, to buy Naira. There was, there's a lot of a negative thing associated to his legacy. Could it be that he's trying to just put in the last legacy? I think the only legacy here is the second Niger Bridge, you know, being commissioned. So could it be that he's just trying to have an, a legacy of saying, okay, I appointed someone that could do this, like a fruitable or fruitation uh, appointment that would last? <laughs> could that be the uh, You know, the majority of this appointment won't last. You appointed head of, if you look at that, if you content analyze based on the newspaper reports, there are more than 50 in the last uh, couple of uh, days. Why? He has been slumbering maybe all this uh, was and what if it. You know, these are things that Nigerians can easily uh, 
referred to. By from the Eagle Square, from the speech of the incumbent president, you will know how we are the pendulum will swing right there. Secondly, <laughs> when Jonathan left, designing became sort it's of a queen of sleaze and what have you. We will have so many designers in this administration. It became a scapegoat. Exactly, you understand. So, the books will be open. Mm. You will see how the type of life, this, the, the, the outgoing um, president, his family members, cabals, you know, and all that. You will then see they are losing power. They have lost power now. You understand? They have left the place. The books are there. People who are now um, massaging their ego, ego now will not no longer mm. be there. So the books will be open, and Nigerians will know the extent of rot mm. recorded. Look at it. Thankfully, yeah, we had the second Niger bridge. Where is Mambila? He just commissioned Kashimbila not long ago. Kashimbila was more than 70% completed by May 29, 2015. Zungeru was more than 65% completed by May 29, 2015. Zungeru, we are still talking about concessioning, deconcessioning, and what if you? What of the Abuja, Kaduna, Zari, Ekanorot? Look at all these things. What of the Lagos Ibada Expressway? It was one of the mega projects he made on ground. And up to tomorrow, we are still talking, Fashola is still talking about Lagos about the Expressway. Okay, focus is on one. He made a standard, non-standard gate, the Colonial Railway, mm. that was still moving from Lagos to Kano and Medjugorje. It can no longer move. Oh. Even the one, when he came, the Abuja light rail, built by the Chinese, by the Jonathan administration, was almost it, not, more than 90% completed. So he inaugurated it. It worked for only six months. Well, it has collapsed. You laying out all this, you know, uh, just makes me remember when he was actually appointed and a lot of people were excited about the fact that he was appointed because, you know, he seemed to do very well as a Lagos governor back then. But uh, let's move on to more stories. We're talking about tension, right? Now, talking about uh, the aviation sector. The reports that uh, domestic airlines are actually making moves to stop the takeoff of Nigerian air today. They should stop worrying themselves. I don't know why they are even... It's a joke. Very huge joke. So the Sirikas airline is, is taking off on Friday. The last day you'll be in office. Okay, maybe you'll be coming to office on Saturday or on Sunday, right? This is the last working day of this administration. Mm. So the airlines will... They shouldn't even bother <laughs> because the whole thing is a joke. The whole thing is a job. Ryan, write it. <laughs> you write it. It's just like the second runway. Mm. We talk about it here. They have been budgeting money for the consultancy for this, for that. Whereas even the land has not been acquired and allocated by the FCT administration. I imagine. <laughs> so the domestic airlines, they should go and sleep, please. Mm. They, you don't, they don't need to raise any eyebrow. It's a huge job. Okay, we are waiting to see. Maybe it is the Nigerian, what do they call it? Nigerian, yeah, right? That the president will use to go to Dora. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, sad, you know. It's really sad uh, there. Uh, with all these, you know, things happening, of course, we're looking at, wouldn't, wouldn't this generate more tension? You know, already there is tension in the APC, uh, you know, uh, room, or should I say, where they're already fighting for the, um, you know, House of Reps, um, Senate, and the Speaker, uh, Speaker for House of Reps, and then Senate. Uh, so these people are 
already in tension and now the president is adding more tension to it leaving the president elect with other tension with a lot of people because we know that a lot of people that were appointed are still some members of the party wouldn't this create a lot of tension for the um, apc administration and at the end of the day it might go south you know for the nation because at the end of the day when they uh, they say when the lions are fighting then it's the grass that yeah, suffers yeah. it mm -hmm. i think maybe uh, the incumbent president is an experienced politician so he knows best how to handle it. But again, uh, we know the tradition. You can't be appointing people on your last days in office. Allow the new man to appoint these people. That's the mistake many, particularly governors do. By the time he's moving, he will appoint his SGF, SSG, he will appoint his chief of staff and what of you. And look at it. The honeymoon won't last long, maybe six months, one year. We saw what happened between Ganduja and Congo Senkano. Like many other uh, places. And in the case of uh, um, the APC, as well, you, you are even borrowing. You, the Buhari administration cowardly refused to remove subsidy. But they want to get palliative, $800 million palliative, to share in the name of subsidy. Look at the contradiction. And I was telling a friend yesterday, Chair, I'm afraid. You know, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, he's notorious for so many things. During COVID, schools are locked. In fact, the entire country was locked. But he spent billions feeding, feeding our children who were at home. So nobody knows. Maybe by today or tomorrow, she will say that they have collected this 800 million and they have already shared it. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, let's, uh, we're talking about Kanu, right? Let's, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on the charges of uh, Dodogua that were dropped. So, uh, I think, you know, we're talking about the new administration. I don't know the position of the law, whether with this, you know, the new administration can still revisit the case. The last, what the high court judge said was, uh, you know, he... In his ruling, you know, he said the magistrate court has no right, has no locus, you know, to look into the matter. It lacks uh, jurisdiction to attend to the matter in the first place, to investigate, detain him, and, 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 and what if you. And he asked the Kano state uh, government, government through their DPP, you know, to file in their. Um, yeah, it's a criminal case, you know, as it were. So we wait to see, because the whole thing was more political than what if it. And you know, the way the Ganduji administration hurriedly concluded uh, investigation and you know, declared that verdict. You know. mm. So we don't know what uh, the NNPP administration will do. Maybe they will revisit the matter or they will allow it the way it is. Keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is room for appeal and, and more, but uh, uh, people, Nigerians are complaining a lot about our judicial system, and this could actually put uh, you know a little bit of tension considering that people are saying we saw a lot of video coming out with a lot of accusations and there was people showing uh, uh, evidence of what really happened uh, on that situation of Adodugua so people are already doubting the judicial system what's your take on that w would the government the, or anyway you said that the uh, NNPP uh, would wait to see what they do but what should the victims do in their time because they need to do something to make people believe that you know there there is justice in in the situation yeah but uh, more importantly i think uh it's a murder case so it's a criminal case so therefore um the government the prosecution must prove beyond reasonable doubt that uh the lawmaker has indeed committed those offenses he was charged for. You know, it's not just like any civil um, case. It's a murder case. And you know, it's a capital, uh, it, it may carry capital punishment. Okay. So I think maybe uh, what the incoming administration will do is, you know, they have to really prove beyond reasonable doubt. And you know, since it's a criminal, it has to go to up to the Supreme Court. Mm. 
And like you said, you know, uh, maybe if the state is serious, you know, it's equally, unfortunately, the victims, the victims that they are, you know, uh, they are the receiving end, because neither state government, who knows if the table changes mm -hmm. and I do go and move to the NNPP. Anything can happen, mm. like we saw in... So is that a possibility, him moving to the NNPP? Who, oh, okay, or oh, the <laughs> other way around, if the NNPP in Kano moves to APC, ah. we saw a <laughs> meeting in Paris. Oh, the NNPP leader, as Senator Ravi Moussa Konkoso, met with the incoming president, as Sergei Paul Amatirbe in France. And the newspapers were plastered with stories that the Kano NPP man is moving to APC. So, if that happens, like I said, you know, uh, those uh, uh, innocent Nigerians, you know, mostly they are the receiving end. Mm. When the two elephants fight, it is the grass, you know, and unfortunately nobody talk about them. They are just like pounds in the game. Mm -hmm. It was about election. He has won. The NPP won the state government election, and now they are trying to dine and wine together. Okay. So who knows? <laughs> well, very interesting, interesting analysis there. Thank you so much, uh, Nuruddin Abdullah, for you know uh, always taking time to you know spend time with us to analyze some of these stories on Fridays. We really, really appreciate you.